Hey, we're looking at the concept of topologies now, and in particular two topologies, star and bus. So the term topology itself just refers to the arrangement of the nodes, so how they're organized, how they're laid out, and node is another word for just a device in a network. And so arrangement of the nodes and connections in the network. So connections being basically the wires and how these nodes are able to communicate with each other. And there are various ways you can arrange networks, so various topologies, and we're going to look at two as I say. But we can approach topologies from both a logical and a physical perspective. So we'll come back to this later, but logical is referring to the operation of the topology or the, or the network, and physical is referring to how it's actually laid out in real life. But we'll come back to that right at the end of this video. But first of all, let's talk about the star topology, so one of the most common topologies there are. And in fact, most home networks will use this topology. So in this arrangement, we have a central device, a router, a wireless access point, a hub, a switch, and so on. And all the devices, all the nodes are connected to this central device. So all the messages go via this central device. So if this workstation here, this computer wants to connect to the server, it will send a message via this switch, let's say, and it will go to the server. So that's how the messages get passed on. The wires are all connecting to the central point, and the point is actually distributing the messages to the other areas. It doesn't really matter if you don't know what a hub or a switch is, but a hub will just repeat the messages, so it will just send all the messages out, whereas a switch will actually be more selective and send it to the correct device. Um, but if we can evaluate this, often exam questions are framed in the context of evaluate this topology, what's good about it, what's bad about it. One of the main plus points to this arrangement is that if one cable or one device fails, then the other devices will be unaffected. This is not true for other topologies, but if one of these devices failed, so say this workstation at the top here failed, or the cable from it to the central point failed, then of course this would be affected, this node would be affected, but the other nodes would still be able to communicate with each other without uh, being affected by the uh, downtime of another node. Also, because the cables aren't shared, because each device has a separate cable going to the central device, no data collisions occur, or very few occur. So it's said to be a high performing topology. So if you have data collisions when data gets sort of mixed up, you have multiple devices trying to communicate using the same wire, that's gonna slow down the network. You have to retransmit the data because it can't be read properly. In this topology, usually that doesn't really occur because they have separate wires to the central device. In terms of actually making the network bigger, extending it, to add a new device is relatively easy. You just have to connect to the central node and you'll be up and running. On the negative side, and of course it's all relative, but the star topology is said to be quite expensive to install. It does need quite a lot of cabling. Other topologies will need a lot more cabling, a lot more wires, but you still need an individual wire going to each central device. There's not really much sharing of wires, so it could be more efficient. And of course you need to get to this central device. For quite a large network, you need quite a powerful device to actually be able to connect all the individual devices so that might be quite expensive and uh, so the startup cost of this network is quite high. On that message the general performance of the network is going to be limited by the performance of the central device so if your central node is very slow then the whole network is going to be very slow because everything needs to go via this central device it's really the bottleneck in this arrangement so you might have to upgrade the central device if your network is too slow because it needs to be more powerful. Also, there's a lot of pressure on this central node, so if it fails, then so will the whole network. It's the only access point to the other devices. So if the central device fails, then the whole network will fail. So it's really important that's kept uh, running the whole time. These are just a few suggestions to evaluate. There are more you can talk about if you'd like to. But now to look at the second topology, the bus topology. So this looks a bit like this, and I should say that in the diagrams I'm showing you, they're nice looking uh, networks in reality of course they don't look like this they're going to be a lot more messy but the idea is that for the bus there is a single wire which all the devices connect to whereas for the star it's a single device all the devices connect to and this single wire here is the bus in the name so when a, when a device wants to communicate the data is transmitted down the bus so say this computer here wanted to print something out it will send a message along the bus and all the devices will receive the message but only the printer will process it because it, the packet that's uh, containing the data has got an address to the printer. So only the printer will actually accept and process the message but all the devices can see it because it's transmitting down this common wire. 
and to stop for messages from bouncing back and forth we have what is known as terminators at either end which is a very cool name for essentially a resistor which just absorbs the electrical signal to stop it going back and forth and clogging up the network Right, let's evaluate the bus topology then. So first of all, the main pro is that not much cable is needed and you don't need to have a specialised device like the hub or switch or router or wireless access point. So that means it's very simple to operate and cheap to set up comparatively to other topologies. However, a key issue is that if the bus fails, then no device can communicate. If all messages are going via the bus, any breakage in the bus is going to cause uh, the whole network to go down, which is obviously quite severe, although we did have that issue with the start topology in terms of the central device going down. Also, data collisions are quite prevalent in a bus network. There are protocols that try and, uh, well, it's, it's difficult to avoid collisions in a bus network. You can detect them and just retransmit, but when the network's busy, you can't really prevent uh, collisions so you have a high error rate and the network slows down because you have to keep retransmitting the data. We don't really have this issue when we have individual wires but here we've got a single wire being used by all the devices. One disadvantage which can be quite detrimental is that all devices can receive the packet so if you send a packet all the other devices can view it if they want to. They might not process it but they can view it and see what it's all about which is obviously going to be a security issue and in a normal environment where security is not that important like in a small office or something like that it's not really an issue but there are obviously contexts where security is much more important and you might choose a more secure topology. Before we finish let me just go back to what I said at the beginning which is that topologies are both physical and logical so a physical topology is the actual layout if, as if you were going in to have a look. So if you traced all the cables in the network and found they all go through a central device, then it's a physical star topology. Whereas logical is about the actual operation and that can be different. So a network can have the same physical and the same logical topologies, that's perfectly normal, but also because of the protocol it's running and the actual device it's using, it can look like one network from just tracing the cables but in fact behave like another which means it's got a different logical topology to its physical topology. A very common example of this is having a physical star topology but actually it operating like a bus topology so it's got a logical bus topology and this is the same diagram I showed you right at the beginning for the star. It looks like a star topology not just because it's in the shape of a star but because all the devices are going they're connecting to a central device. Let's say this central device here was a hub. A hub just repeats messages, so a message will come in and it will send it out to all the other devices. And also let's say all the devices are running a bus protocol like Ethernet, then the whole network will look like a star topology, but will behave like a bus topology because all the message, messages will come in and will get sent out to all the other devices. So it, it behaves like a bus topology. And the reason why this may uh, happen is because in some cases a physical bus network may not be possible because if the network is very large a wire can only stretch so long without losing signal and so on also if it's very busy we talked about how in a bus network collisions are very common this can reduce the collisions especially if it's a switch a switch is more selective it will only send it to the correct place so it won't send every device for message but generally it will behave like a bus topology if it's running a bus protocol to try and bring this into a slightly more realistic example, this is a, a kind of example of how you can use both topologies to try and get the best of both worlds, I suppose. So you can see you've kind of got three different star topologies. If, this, if these devices here are at central nodes like a switch or a hub, these devices are plugged into it. This little subnet can be thought of as running or using a star topology. And if we connect these central devices, we can bridge the gap and, and make the network larger by essentially bringing it into a bus topology. So depending on how you look at it here, it's either going to be a star or, or a bus. But So if this device here is connecting to this device, it's using the star topology. But if this device is connecting to a device up here, it's effectively going via a bus topology. It's going via this central bus. So depending on the perspective you're looking at and the type of communication or the, or the pair of communication, it's either going to be a bus or a star. And of course, the way it's physically laid out could differ to its logical topology because of the protocol it's running.